Welcome back to Rock of the Week and I've been off for a few weeks because I had a baby a few weeks ago and I'm a little bit behind but we're going to catch up right and the first rock we're going to catch up with is a sedimentary rock which is known as sandstone. The next rock in the sequence we've spoke about mudstone and siltstone already, next one's sandstone right and then we'll move on to conglomerate. But sandstone, from the name sand, made up of sand sized particles that can be fine to medium to then coarse grained, right? Coarse grained is anything above like two millimetres. Well, I mean up to two millimetres, sorry. So aye. Sandstone in the name sand. Now we get different types of sandstones deposited in different types of environments. And I've got some examples here with me that we're gonna go through. Um, but we'll start with the basic ones, right? Because we've spoke about sedimentary rocks, and as I said before, sedimentary rocks accumulate over geological time. There has to be space for them, such as a basin, or there has to be usually extension of the crust or somewhere for these sediments to be deposited, like into, like a hole in the ground, you know? And that's what sedimentary rocks are. They're the accumulation of sediments that can be from clay-sized particles, silt-sized particles, sand-sized particles, gravel sized particles all the way through to cobbles and boulders right so the accumulation of these sedimentary you know particles sediments right in a, a space in air so sandstones are usually deposited by different like kinds of things usually water like you get fluvial like um, deposits of sand like you get sand deposited on beaches so beach deposits you get calcareous sands which are like deposited in shallow marine areas like and also you get delta like deposits as well which are deposited at the end of a river so there's quite a lot of like fluvial like deposits of sand and this can be you know clay uh, not clay sorry micas like a, a combination of mica quartz like minerals plagial clays minerals just whatever was eroded away from the mountains originally right that's basically what sand is it's it's eroded away it's weathered away from high up in the mountains carried down by rivers by streams all that like sometimes by ice and then it's deposited like just wherever like that can be on a meandering river like you know like all the way down a river on a river channel all the way through to like the end of the sea and a delta so that's fluvial deposits of sandstone right like so we've got this really lovely nice sandstone from the carboniferous period in scotland that actually shows some really good like cross bedding here like you've got one like direction of like beds and then all of a sudden it's cut off by another direction of beds sometimes this can indicate the what way the flow was going or there's been a change in the flow like in the environment and this can be in like small scale like this rock or it would be in massive large scale so it said like that's a sedimentary feature that you can kind of keep an eye out on this is another fluvial like, deposit, like very nice. This is actually from the North Sea. I can't remember exactly what period of time it is like from, but it actually has little wee burrows in it, which are absolutely class. Like it just shows you that this was probably deposited originally in like on a beach or something, like or just at the edge of like of a marine environment where you had these worms burrowing into like the silts and the sands. This is a fine grained sandstone. So aye. Now the other types of sandstone environments like include ones that have been de deposited in desert environments when you look at the Sahara Desert right now obviously the accumulation of sand over geological time and the Sahara Desert basically means that the winds blowing off the sand particles which are mainly quartz in this case like um, it's blowing them all about and depositing them on the sand dunes so you get like the accumulation of sands that way and usually these are quite like red in colour like because of the iron oxide that coats like the, the sand grains like the quartz grains like in the rock. So I've got a few good examples here. This one's actually falling to pieces but this is like probably a coarse grain sandstone. Um, this is like a pebble like obviously it's quite well rounded. Oh, that means it's been transported like down a river. I think I found this on a beach but it's very like weathering away like quite... Yeah, I just leave it sitting on a shelf, right? And every time I check on it, it's basically weathered away a little bit more just because of the atmosphere it's in and stuff. So, yeah, reason it's red is because it indicates it was deposited in a arid environment. That's what this kind of sandstone is. I've got two other examples of it. This is Permian in age. This is actually a piece of core from the North Sea. And it's the main gas reservoir as well from the North Sea because it's very porous and that's very like good for like reservoirs when you want to walk in gas or oil like um usually like you'd want to 
like for sandstones like this is reservoir rock but that's another like story you know so this again was permian period and during the permian period scotland was situated at the equator we had conditions like the sahara desert today we were all on this massive continent known as pangaea which meant the environment was arid because we're at this equator or just north of the equator it means that you had sand dunes in that like loads of sand dune blown about and you can see that in the rock record as the permian new red sandstone group now we've got another sandstone here which is your main oil reservoir like i think it's called the brent sandstone i cannot remember the age of it i'll look it up and i can smell it from here it smells like a garage it smells like you've walked in to like your dad's garage or something like that or you've just walked in to like get your car done that's what this rock smells like you can see it's like slightly stained like kind of blacky that's got oil in it is that no mad that there's oil locked into the grains in between the grains in this like that's that's where this is a good reservoir rock this is one of the main reservoir rocks in the north sea like this was a piece of core as well once but i kind of broke it by accident it's quite coarse grained it's got micaceous like kind of like it's got mica minerals in there as well as like um quartz and plagial coarse grains and stuff like that and then i've got a core of like carboniferous sandstone here and you can see the individual layers of it like this is 330 million years old like cored underneath glasgow and at the bottom of it you can see there's a change in environment so it's went from sandstone that's probably been deposited like in a river like to then this mudstone that's probably indicating like a change of environment i think it was maybe coal i'm not gonna lie i think this was actually coal at the end of this and that's why it's so dark and basically there was a coal seam in here which represents a terrestrial environment like a swampy area so the environment's changed from a swamp depending on what way up this was i don't know i can't remember because i took it out of core box and i did the mark on the core box but way was the right way up i mean on the core so aye carboniferous period carbon you know like coal and then you've got all these layers of sand like that's been deposited by a river right and it's very thinly laminated to thickly laminated and some of these like show some kind of like cross laminations and ripple marks as well which is pretty cool yeah so that's all your different sandstones that i've kind of got with me here today and as i said we'll just draw it really quickly maybe we'll put those behind oh there they are you have let me get this good and big basically you've got you know i don't know why I, that's my baby in the background so obviously like rivers kind of meander down they deposit like you know sand like on the way down like river and different areas you know right like cobbles and stuff like that and um, sometimes you get sand dunes like wind i can't even like i don't even know why i can't say like do that wind's blowing about and all these particles are kind of alien right they're lifted like they're deposited like um sometimes you get sandstone even deposited in lakes like lacustrine deposits that sometimes the river can you know go into eventually when it gets to the sea it can like come out as a delta that was the best drawn like sometimes the delta has like swampy bits in it as well especially during the carboniferous period where the sea level was changing it would allow like you know a swampy area to form like this terrestrial environment where trees were growing in that and then that would die off like and the sea level would rise again and you would have more sand deposited on top of it you're going to get sand deposited out first right this is the sea sand's always deposited out first like when it comes to like you know suspension and stuff like that like your clay particles and silt particles are going to be suspended out and they'll just like deposit like further out forming your siltstones and your mudstones and also it's the same like through a river as well like through alluvial processes like it, you're gonna have all of your heavier stuff like deposited first like and then your 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 lighter stuff kind of suspends out depending on what environment it is so hi there wasn't really much whiteboard stuff in this week's rock of the week but that sandstone just says it in the word you know sand sand that's accumulated in an area a hole in the ground over geological time it forms sandstone because it cements together and accumulates together the weight of like the layers upon layer upon layer end up like compacted cementing everything together and it forms sandstone that sandstone you get different kinds of sandstone across scotland starting with like your torridonian sandstones which are found 
in the northwest highlands those are the oldest sandstones in scotland and they're up to 1.2 billion years old right they sit directly on top of your Laurasian gneiss right and they're red in color which means they were deposited in an arid environment and they were deposited like by rivers by into lakes like and desert conditions and it was a very hot environment at the time because we were part of a supercontinent known as Rubinia. Rubinia, I can never say it properly. Then you have your old red sandstone which is another major super group of like Scotland's geology. This old red sandstone was deposited during the Devonian period. It's also known up in Sutherland like in the north east side of like Scotland like up north north east like I'm talking. When you look at a geological map or even when you look at a topographical map it's quite flat in that area up in the north kind of um, east section of scotland like near elgin and that like not elgin sorry near um well it is in elgin as well like near in the muddy like coast like and stuff and then up further to that and then orkney and that as well this is your old red sandstone as well you can find old red sandstone in the midland valley which we'll speak about in a minute but the old red sandstone that's found in northeast Scotland was deposited into an old lake basin, right, back during the Devonian period. But now the Devonian period was like 400 odd million years ago, right? And this was all deposited like into a lake back then, and it's known as the Caithness flagstone. It's really good. It's a really good paving slab, and you'll see the Caithness flagstone kind of spotted in some of the major cities across like Scotland as well. Sometimes in England, so it's a really popular paving stone which is known as that case nest flagstone and it's funny because when you go up to the northeast highlands like you find that there's like they use them for like the slabs of the case nest flagstone for like basically the walls and farmers fields which is class just to separate the farmers fields just big slabs that have been stuck into the ground right so aye, that's your old red sandstone up in the northeast side of Scotland and this also contains some fish fossils as well and the, the Devonian period was known as the age of fishies, it's when fish all kind of came out in that and then you know they kind of died when they were swimming about this lake. They died, fell to the bottom of the lake and then like because there was no scavengers, like sca scavengers, I can't say that word, um, cutting about the bottom of the floor because it was anoxic which means there was no oxygen in the bottom of the lake. It meant that nothing could eat these fish, so they were rapidly buried by more sediment over geological time. And they've got like five kilometers worth of sedimentary rocks up that way. Like so five kilometers worth of sediment, like in this lake subsiding, right? It's going down subsiding and you're getting the accumulation of more sediment into that like North Sea, like not North Sea, like into that like lake, like Orcada it's known as and that's obviously accumulating over geological time forming your old red sandstone there now the old red sandstone found in the midland valley is a little bit different it's more fluvial deposits like delta deltic deposits as well as like some arid deposits as well and that was all deposited during the same period as as the like orcada ones like the caithness plate flagstone but instead like there was extension in the Midland Valley like and you had the extension of the crust you had all the erosion from the mountains like the Caledonian Erogeny mountains in the north and we just combined it like with Laurentia like had just combined like with Avalonia like we ended up into like this kind of continent that that what's known as Larissa like which is the old red sandstone continent and it was arid it was hot we were just south of the equator it was the Devonian period like it was yeah, it was the time of the sandstone, like the old red sandstone, and you had deposits in the Midland Valley that sits at the base of the Midland Valley. I mean, you're not too sure which under the Midland Valley it might be, another like volcanic arc of some sort, but we don't really know. Um, so aye, that, that was the accumulation of sediment like in there. And then you have Carboniferous sandstones that were deposited during the Carboniferous period and also Triassic period too. You have your new red sandstones, which, is, which we spoke about before because Pangaea, like we were on a continent called Pangaea, we were joined on in America and all that, like, and yeah, new red sandstones, carboniferous sandstones, there's like this sandstone, it was a lot lighter, known as your blonde sandstone, this is probably carboniferous in age as well, I think this is actually Jurassic and Triassic, no, Jurassic in age maybe, but the carboniferous period, like we were at the equator, the environment was a lot more humid, meaning it wasn't, you know, there wasn't as much iron oxygen, there was lots of oxygen in the atmosphere and then you had the deposition of obviously this sandstone like it's lighter in colour you see some of the buildings and like uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh made up of this sandstone it's same with the old red sandstone and new red sandstone moving into the Permian period 250 million years ago you had like the the obviously the desert the new red sandstones like which again like were deposited as because we were on this supercontinent known as Pangaea they were Aeolian namely like environments like 
and moving on from that during the Triassic and Jurassic like periods and Cretaceous periods like there was obviously some more sandstone deposited in the North Sea and all of that and some of it's found like on the Isle of Skye and the Isle of Mull like the kind of west coast islands like underneath some of the lavas that you find over there because I think the lavas protecting it all like um, and there's some at Helmsdale too on the east coast like of Jurassic and Triassic like um, Triassic and Jurassic rocks like so this was the age of the dinosaurs they've obviously found dinosaur footprints on sky and some dinosaur remains so aye like you know that was deposited in sandstone intertidal kind of areas where there was lots of accumulation of sands like there was like the rising and falling of sea level sometimes and you, you got some more sandstone deposited in that area but that's it that's this week's rock of the week sandstone hopefully you enjoy